In a perfect world, your neck would look something like this when you walk or run. A nice, healthy shock absorber system bouncing and gliding smoothly with a nice, healthy forward arch. This is what we hope to improve in your neck. So your spine functioning better, then you can actually do something that would be uh, more along the lines of a traditional stretch, which we can talk about at a later time. So take it easy. Please don't force anything. Um, you want to gently stimulate the segmental motion of your spine. It's much more effective than trying to stretch muscles that are already in spasm. Um, if you have severe pain, there's typically swelling, inflammation in acute cases. You might try some ice 10 minutes at a time, alternating with moist heat like a warm shower. I always caution people about deep, intense heat. If you have a bad, acute pain where there's a lot of swelling, what's called edema, where there's fluid that's in between the uh, irritated area, and inflammation, the last thing you want to do is heat that area with a deep heat. Now, it's okay to use a superficial heat, like a warm shower, um, but don't use a deep, deep heat. So, alternating on the acute painful stages with uh, five, 10 minutes of a cold pack, and then um, moist heat like a warm shower. And you can use topicals like BioFreeze um, on the skin surface. Those are okay. You can use topicals. They don't do a lot very deeply in terms of an actual thermal heat or cold, but they do give a little bit of a topical, kind of a chemical relaxation of the muscles. Um, and on this sheet, I talk about foods that have an uh, inflammatory effect on your system. I have, we have a couple other videos that you'll be able to view and handouts that talk about foods that cause your body to be more prone to inflammation and toxicity. And then there are foods that are have more of what I would call a fire extinguisher effect that have kind of a cooling effect on your system. And by the way, the same foods that have a cooling effect on your blood vessels and on your body to help fight pain are also the same foods that help your cardiovascular system, your heart, your blood vessels. So those foods are good across the board, not only for pain, but also for help, having good health in general. So be sure and read the, the handout about, that it's titled, uh, Is Your Body Hyper Prone to Inflammation and Pain? And there's another one that's titled, Foods That Have a Cooling Effect on Your Body. So be sure and read those or watch the videos either through our website or um, through YouTube. So when you're not in pain, one of the most important things to remember is to use proper pillow support. So we're gonna talk about pillows very quickly. Pillow support is very important. Keep in mind, the idea is to support the natural arch of your neck. Remember, the neck has a natural arch. As a general rule of thumb, you always want to minimize support that presses on the back of your head. You want it to primarily push in the middle of your neck. That's what slightly pushes the, what's called the lower dosis, it's the middle arch of your neck, a little bit forward. When you do that, it causes the bones in your neck to assume a healthier stack. They're designed to stack up in a little bit of a, of a forward arch, just a little bit. So if your pillow is pushing on the back of your head, it's reversing that. It's kind of counterproductive when the pillow is primarily pushing here without any pressure here. So you want most of it to be in the middle of your neck. Now the same rule applies when you're in a seated position. So for example, when you're on an airplane flight, you know how those airplanes, they're basically pushing the head forward the whole time. Especially for people who have neck problems, and I do this, and I don't have neck problems, but when I'm on an airplane, I'll roll up a small airplane blanket or I'll carry something with me, or of course the donut pillows are great, uh, but not every, realistically we don't always have those with us when we're flying on airplanes. So you want to put whatever you have right in the middle of your neck so that it presses in just a little bit. I know it seems like a small thing, but trust me, it's a big thing, especially for people who have chronic neck problems, okay? Airplane seats and cars are really designed to just support the head, and they're really not designed to properly ergonomically support your neck. So you have to go the extra mile to be intentional about supporting your neck. So on an airplane or in your car, or now, when you're at home, relaxing on your sofa, sitting on the couch, watching TV, make sure that your primary support is not pressing on the back of your head. Make sure it's pressing in the middle of your neck. So the rules apply to positions not only when you're lying down, but also when you're in the seated position. Okay, so remember that. If you can remember these simple little things, as simple as they are, they can make a big, big difference. Okay, 
Same rules apply with ergonomic factors. What I mean by ergon ergonomics, that's activities of daily li living, things that we do, especially when we're on our computer. The rules with computer is if you're working on a laptop, the small monitors are often, even if you have good eyesight, you're still, the tendency is to lean forward into the monitor. The larger the monitor you can use on your computer, the better. You want the larger monitors whenever possible. Because you want to try to get your weight bearing load from here to here. You want your neck and your head to stack up more evenly. Now I'm not talking about being perfectly straight. I'm just talking about getting your center of gravity going back. Remember your head is about the weight of a bowling ball. So it's a lot of pressure stacked on those little bones. And if your head is going forward, that causes a real cumulative strain on your neck. So remember that. Also on your computer, make sure your keyboard is straight on and your computer monitor is level. If your computer monitor is off to the side, that's causing a, a torque or a twist in your neck. Cumulatively, that causes irritation. Get the monitor centered. On your keyboard, you want to make sure that the height of the keyboard is not too low or too high because then irritation along your forearm and your carpal tunnel and repetitive strain going into your arms, upper extremities, and your neck, it creates distortion if that's not level. So you want to make sure that your keyboard is providing a bit of a comfortable angle between your forearm and your shoulder. If it's too low or if it's too high, it's going to cause a problem. You want the angle right here to be relaxed and comfortable. So adjust your keyboard height. Sometimes you have to get rid of your keyboard, get rid of your desk completely and get something new. Trust me, it's worth it. When you are on a computer for weeks, months, or years, the investment you make in setting up your ergonomics properly is a big, will pay you back big dividends. Fewer visits in here, uh, fewer problems, you'll get better return on your investment for your pillows and your mattresses because those things that we do often, such as working at a computer, working on our laptops, all those things have a very cumulative effect on your system, on your body, on your spine. So pain can be greatly managed. Again, these are simple things, but they're very, very important things you want to remember. Okay? So we talked about computers, we talked about keyboards. On this sheet it says, when you have muscle spasm, remember that most muscle spasm is not the cause of your problem. Most muscle spasm is the result of your problem. So people often assume that, oh, tight muscles, bad muscle. Actually, the tight muscles is your body's way of responding to something. So if you have a tight muscle and you're just trying to stretch, stretch, stretch that tight muscle, you could really be overriding your natural compensating mechanism. Don't force anything when it comes to the spine, especially the neck. Always remember that muscle spasm is the response to a problem, not the cause. Okay, um, if you have arthritis or spine stiffness, there's typically some degenerative thinning of your disc. Um, the shock absorbers in your neck, the shock absorptive capacity of your ligament capsules between the bones is compromised. Uh, those are the links in between the bones. So when you look at this spine, imagine almost like a little pair of knuckles. They call this the articular pillar, and there are pairs of ligament capsules that attach the bones. If you have thinning of these little cushions in here, if the cushions are thinned and you have calcium deposits and bone spurs, your spine is already compromised. And so you want to be even more careful and more gentle with how you handle and manage your spine. 